If you've watched enough of my videos, you've probably heard me say this more than anything I've ever repeated. Fighting game characters are designed to tell you everything about them in a single glance. Perhaps more than any other genre, fighting games are the masterclass in functional character visuals, instantly able to set an expectation of a character's personality, attitude, fighting style, gameplay, and more. It's no wonder, then, that all the discourse around the upcoming Melty Blood type Lumina is leaving so many people dumbfounded at their choice of character designs. Like, these character designs aren't just bland, they're beyond bland. They don't even look like fighting game characters. And that's the point. They aren't. So today, let's dive into the question baffling the internet at large. Why do Melty Blood characters look so plain? First, let's get our bearings. What even is Melty Blood in the first place? Melty Blood is a fighting game made by developer French Bread and a spin-off of a visual novel called Tsukihime, developed by Type Moon and created by writer Kinoko Nasu and illustrator Takeshi Takeuchi. Like most Type Moon visual novels, the plot is… kinda loaded. So let's just say it's about vampires, witches, church assassins, and killer knife magic. Type Moon at the time wasn't a particularly large developer. They were what you'd call a doujin developer, basically a self-publishing indie studio. It wasn't uncommon for doujin developers to make goofy spin-off games of their visual novel IPs. But Melty Blood was special. Not only did it feature a brand new story in the Tsukihime universe, it also had a full voice cast, some stellar animation, and fast-paced gameplay that was both easy and exciting. It soon became clear that Type Moon and French Bread had a winner on their hands, as they continued releasing new versions of Melty Blood, eventually leaping from the relatively small circle of doujin PC gaming into the arcade scene with Melty Blood Act Cadenza. Melty Blood would continue to get title updates and ports to consoles and arcades, eventually eclipsing the original Tsukihime in popularity. At the same time, Type Moon was also developing the Fate franchise, which also exploded out of control, pretty much leaving Tsukihime in the dust. Plans for a Tsukihime reboot were announced in 2008, but none of it would see the light of day until late 2020, when its first trailer was revealed. And naturally, a brand new Melty Blood, called Melty Blood Type Lumina, would be released alongside it. Despite Melty's popularity overtaking Tsukihime, it is still an adaptation of a visual novel. And character designs for visual novels tend to work differently from character designs in fighting games. If I may retread old ground for just a minute, Fighting game characters are designed the way they are because you interact with them through real-time combat gameplay. Every single attack, animation, and voice line should inform you about some aspect of this character and give you a complete picture of who they are before the fight is even over. Does that mean that fighting game characters can only be as deep as they appear on the surface? Of course not. A lot of fighting game characters have a lot of little details that aren't present in their in-game depiction. On the opposite end of the spectrum are visual novel characters, whom you interact with largely through long stretches of dialogue, slowly uncovering these characters through personal interactions over hours and hours of prose. You might be able to glean one or two things from a character's artwork, but the greater weight of their depth is going to be in their writing. This is also why the cast of Persona 4 Arena might not appear appealing as fighting game characters at first glance. But just like how there are exceptions to fighting game character depth, there are also exceptions to visual novel character design. Some visual novels lean towards more distinct aesthetics and create characters with more striking visual appeal. The core cast of Nitro Plus Blasters is made entirely of visual novel characters, and a few of them seem far too distinct for that to be true. Likewise, the cast of Danganronpa is designed specifically to give you immediate expectations of each character's attitudes and vocations, giving you the information you need to make decisions based on your assumptions about them, or to subvert them. 
the entire realm of character design is nebulous, and I didn't mean to imply that fighting game characters can only be loud and overt, and visual novel characters can only be drawn back and subtle. You design your characters based on your needs, and whether that calls for loudness or subtlety will always change. Which of course begs the question, if Type Lumina is a reboot of Melty Blood, why didn't Type Moon take the opportunity to redesign the characters into real fighting game characters? Primarily, it's because Type Lumina isn't a reboot of Melty, it's an accompanying spin-off to Tsukihime, A Piece of Blue Glass Moon, which is still primarily a visual novel first. But more than anything else, there is a purpose to Tsukihime's philosophy of design. Type Moon is best known for its three flagship IPs, Kara no Kyokai, The Garden of Sinners, Tsukihime, and Fate. All three of them take place in contemporary modern day, and all of them are concealing a separate supernatural world of vampires, magic, and whatnot. As the veil of reality is pulled back, the protagonists find themselves thrust into a conflict far beyond their understanding. That element of the hidden supernatural is important to Type Moon stories, a genre I like to call magic assholes fighting in the streets at night, as much of these conflicts happen literally on the empty streets at night where supernatural wars are being waged right beneath the noses of common civilization. Much of Tsukihime's characters appear plain on the outside to conceal what they truly are. You're not supposed to know that Arkhuad is an immortal vampire princess from the moon. You're not supposed to know that Akiha is some kind of heat-manipulating hair demon. Even the protagonist Shiki himself has things to conceal. A lot of the tension in Tsukihime comes from this element of the unknown. Even with a character like Nero Chaos, who appears frightening and intimidating on the outside, it's unclear what danger he poses until he starts summoning shadow beasts out of his body. If Shiki showed up in Melty Blood looking like Seth, or if Arkhuad showed up looking like Rachel Alucard, much of that mystique would be lost. Ironically, this is also where you can see a clear distinction between original Tsukihime characters and characters who were made uniquely for Melty Blood. Since these characters are debuting in a fighting game, they don't have the luxury of having hours of prose build up and escalating tension to conceal what they are, so they must instead rely on the visual language of fighting game design to be much more overt. This ends up creating this mixed bag where Melty's roster is filled with these completely ordinary people with hidden powers, and occasionally you get very obviously a video game character. It's possible we won't even see characters like Xion and Wallachia in Type Lumina, as it's been stated that Type Lumina is a precursor to Tsukihime rather than a sequel like the original Melty was, which means we're even less likely to see fighting game characters and more likely to see showcase videos featuring some random school kid or a couple of mates. But what I think is really special about Melty Blood is how it manages to bridge that gap between loud overt fighting game design and subtle prose-driven visual novel design. If you pick up Melty Blood right now, it does not take you long to acquaint yourself with its cast, just from their animations, moves, and voice performances alone. You can immediately pick up that despite her immense power, Arkhuad is jovial, upbeat, and playful. You can immediately tell that Akiha is assertive and forceful, and you can easily tell which of these two maids is the prim and proper one and which one is the goofball. People love to joke that Aozaki Aoko is peak fighting game design, but what they don't know is that they're right. Aoko is some kind of all-powerful magus who can shoot space lasers out of her fingers, and the fact that she goes around in a t-shirt and jeans is because she's laid back and never takes anything seriously and you can feel that within seconds of playing her. Needless to say, all of this is intentionally designed, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I like Melty Blood, and I think Type Lumina is going to be a fantastic game, but I don't think it'll see much in the way of mainstream success as much as I would like it to. But hopefully with Type Lumina, this means there will be people experiencing this duality for the very first time. So in the end, Melty Blood character designs are boring. 
and that's perfectly fine. Thanks for watching today's Abatorial. Be sure to leave a like and let me know in the comments what you think about Melty Blood. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more anime and game content from Sugar Punch. Our channel is supported on Patreon, so be sure to check it out for early access to all of our future videos. I'm ABI, and I'll see you later.